Hey everybody, welcome to the Art of Comics. This is your host, Andres Salazar. We are at part three of the amazing Ronin book by Frank Miller, uh, originally published by DC Comics. And this is the gallery edition of the book, which is the full-sized comic book original art that Frank Miller did for the series. This was uh, published by Graffiti Designs, and they call their books, they call these uh, gallery editions. And uh, we're in now part three. We're actually in book three. And uh, let's just bang. No, wait, 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 wait. No, we're not at book three. My bad. We're on book four. Because we ended right there. Yeah. ba down. That's where we ended. Part three is in book four. Let's just check it out. Note now, I just want you guys to know, my little mistakes right there. I've not read this. I mean, I've, excuse me. I've not seen this. Like, I've not walked through this. This is the first time I've walked through this. I've read the story, of course. Oh my Gouda. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful, dude? Ah, oh, this is so good. I love this, man. This is really, really neat. I love these big, big pieces. So this is the original right here. This is the size. It's kind of a weird size page. Where's my um, my big ruler? I'm just curious. My big T square. I'm curious what size this is. What is this? It's kind of a strange page. It's a good uh, 20. 20. Is it 20 by 20? Yeah, 20 by 20. Where do you get that kind of paper? He must. He must just cut it up. Because you don't buy 20 by 20 square pages. Uh, and I would love to know, like, the actual type of paper this is. Like, what kind of thickness. You know, 200, 300, 400, what is it? How thick was this stuff? Very cool. I dig this a lot. I'm just going to look at this for a minute. And just, like, just soak this in. What a great page. And then when you look, when you look close to it, you just kind of can really check out all these neat lines that he's doing here with this little like um, you know this little tech pen of some sort and then, and then it looks like some some other maybe it's all crow quill mm. I love it's like big thick almost like a marker using different tools a little white out there the blood and then there's these abstract kind of like urban design type stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at this. And then we kind of go into this full again, kind of European with these nice blacks. Really great on the spotting of the blacks. Just let your eye, have, have your eye kind of go forward. Um, yeah, still everything's pretty rough. This is another page. He, actually, these three are different pages. You could tell here he's got the tape. He's taped these up. Yeah. I don't know why he did that. I'm so curious about if it was just a matter of, uh, yeah, of, of why. Why was that? Why did he do it that way? Love to know. Now we're getting into just like some nice black. And then now, just so you know, this is all pretty much black. You don't see the strokes or the... The, the uh, you don't see the, the brush strokes on these blacks. It's just pure black. Um, I'm assuming that's just because the, the reproduction of these. But the originals, uh, you probably would see them unless you use some kind of a, really something really strong. So now we have uh, Casey is now kind of uh, lost or Kind of confused of where she's at right now. She's going to be our heroine. We talked about that before in part one and two. Um, I dig her a lot. She reminds me of that character in Sin City. I can't remember the name of it. It's like I'll have to think about who who she you know reminds me of. Oh, look at this. Remember these? Uh, now the city is just like almost completely overgrown with this biocircuitry kind of technology from the uh, Aquarius Corporation. And again, these are those duo shade pages and they're usually they're gonna be uh, kind of transition, scene transition, yep. And now we got this. So very different, you know, we had 
we went from a black, again, he's always doing this, really dark, a lot of panels, but it's a, um, a 16 panel stuff. And then now we go into the Aquarius uh, and in, in this world, it's usually bigger panels and very little blacks. And it's just little lines, little hatching, little like Monera, M Mobius type of, of line work. I like that a lot. And that's cool, those hands, look, that looks really nice. Yeah, you can see the pencil here in this stuff. You see, you see the pencil work, you see he like rewrote something here. You can see he uh, he changed where to put it, and then there's some white out here and there, different spots. He made the chin a little bit bigger. He had the chin originally a little bit too too much. It's so fascinating. Like I probably would have just kept that, but he wanted it just that other like eighth of an inch bigger chin, so he changes it, and it's just with that little line. It's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, this one, yeah, he reworked this face a lot. You can see a lot of the erasing and the kind of the pencil work. And it looks like that pencil really cut into that paper. You know, when you're using those hard pencils, the H's and stuff, they just, they're light, but they cut into that paper because it's so hard. You kind of can see that, which is really neat. See the, uh, what, it, what it does. Chews up the paper a bit. Yeah, that's great. And so this is basically, uh, you know, the demon has taken over Mr. Taggart, Taggart, and then there's this conflict with the big scientist that um, that they're working with. Yeah, that kind of created the whole system. And Virgo, of course, is like. Virgo's kind of an interesting character because it's this AI, but it definitely has this will, and it's kind of its own, like, um, motivation, which I find kind of interesting, too. I mean, it's actually, it's pretty complex, the story. Um, I like these things here. I like this. This is, like, a really cool little, like, visual. Reminds me of that movie that came out about the uh, alien languages. I forgot what it was called. Just another one of these little guys. And now we're seeing the wep weaponized, uh, he's sorry, Taggart's meeting with some of the Sawa Corporation guys talking about war. And he says, observe gentlemen, observe how Aquarius goes to war. And Lynn Barley will paint all his green. And these are these biocircuitry like war machines, you know, Armada. This is like a robot, looks like a big robot guy and stuff. So we see, um, little skiffs and, and stuff like that. And now we're back. This is really cool. I like this a lot. I like when you use the dry brush around the tubing. That wasn't used too much back in the 80s. It was a little bit, but I think this is around the time when people really were playing with different um, mark making tools and, and different things. Yeah, I like this. I like these little big black, this this stuff a lot. It's a great shadows too. Lights coming in here. The shadows are hitting him, but they're through these pipes. But notice it's all kind of strangely, like there's no pipe that it's crooked that way. But he, so he's kind of like doing some kind of a artistic license on it, but it looks great. It's really fun. Yeah. Ronan is here. And now he's going to womp on some of these mutant characters. We see them before up. And we see that they are, um, these mutants are cannibals. That's the big lesson we get out of this part of the story. That's really cool. Miller does, is, does just a wonderful job of breaking things down into shapes and very simplistic things. I was just looking up some some Jack Kirby. Oh, where is it? Yeah, I just got this actually today. We're gonna talk about this, The Losers, because um, Jack does the same thing. This was 1975. 
And he's doing the same thing, and so does Toth do this a lot too, is just breaking things down in very simple shapes that, that communicate, you know, what you need to do. He doesn't overwork it, not extra, not too many lines, only when there's certain little effects and things he's trying to do. But this right here is just a great panel. Silhouettes in the front, shadows, sword being drawn, all these things. Yeah, it's just great. Simple hands, he's not putting all these knuckles and veins, just very simple. Yeah, it's really good too. Horror, you know, there's, there's a good amount of like horror imagery in this, which is kind of fun, I'm sure, for him too. Just doing. And we see this layout often. He does these big splashes with these little guys. He'll do these like kind of film strip type panels uh, with just like minimal change to kind of show at time going by or different uh, vantage points, different characters. These big, big double page spreads. He, he does that often. Stat in. I don't know if it, I have to, I'd be curious. I wonder if it, this is the same as that, maybe. Look at the original. Yeah. And it goes. Yeah, this is great. Just simple. Yeah. And now we're back. I like these pages a lot too, to be honest. I mean, it's so different. I like the word, the word, how the words are going. A lot of times, you know, you have these word balloons that are covering up all over around the body and on the face, but it's interesting, he just does this column here. You know, he does these two columns, that way you can kind of focus on the art here and it doesn't obscure anything. I like that idea a lot. I also noticed that uh, it's very angular, these word balloons. Is that through the whole book? Is, uh, let me see how Casey's... How does she talk? You can go back real quick. Or we'll just we'll do it when we go forward. I'm just curious if these hard um, geometric shaped word balloons are specific to this setting. Uh, yeah, not really. It's probably probably just throughout the whole story. I just noticed it just now. This is great too. This little new robot that they created. It's, it's kind of an interesting idea. I haven't seen things like this. <clears throat> the way he's deciding to draw the science fiction of the machinery with these um, little, I guess, circuits or, or, or kind of like a, um, you know, all this looks like a board, right? A, a motherboard or some sort of uh, electrical panel, you know? And even here as well with the the um, lines with the little like T's everywhere. So I really like that. I haven't seen that in other spots and other places before this. And even after, I don't think I've seen kind of uh, machinery or cybernetics drawn like that. It's kind of neat. I'm sure he cribbed it from somewhere. This is a really cool image too. This is really neat. Yeah, that's a really neat, really neat picture. It's a great face. I mean, it's like each pan I could sit here and talk about how each one is just brilliant. This is interesting. He's using a little white out here for the kind of lighting. It's like key lighting. Yeah, so he's he's going back and putting a lot of white out. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. No white out here. But then once we go back into here, he kind of like, maybe he wants to show a little bit more of the... He might have had it all just, and then he decided to put a little bit more, a little more texture, a little uh, molding on that face. That's really cool. I like that a lot as well. Yeah, good, nice, strong hand. That's a great finger. He's great at fingers and hands and positioning. Just really good. Again, really simple, not too much. I could take a note out from that playbook there. A lot of times we get too focused on all the little details and such, but that's looks good.
back on the duo shade paper. Oh, I like this. It's nice too. <clears throat> It's interesting how these are all two dimensional, but then the question mark, the, the question mark circle there is three dimensional, but I think that might just be the um, little like pustule or something on his face. That may not look like that. That's fun little lettering there. Like the way it crosses out off her face with the hair and the bloodstream. These are great little action spots, too. Ooh, the color, page color changes a lot on this one. Oh, this is from the very beginning in page. Um, yeah, this is great. What can you say? What can I say about this? This is a great, great image. This little action here. I mean, this is definitely shades of Sin City, right? You really get that feeling. He's jumping. I mean, this is just really neat. He's running, he does this beginning of the jump, and now we're in full jump, full like swing back. Feet are up, I mean, really neat. You know, the only thing, his top of his head's all obscured from the darkness. It's just his eyes and his mouth and nostrils. And there's this great pitch. You know, you don't want to put it right in the middle, put it right to the side, just a little bit. Give it that composition. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, here's more of that circuitry. Yeah, and this is done, um, again, duo shade, but now he's putting white out. So he's doing all the little circuits and stuff, white out, and he's also putting white out on the, the chemically treated parts. And then this might be, I don't know what this here is, if this is like, just paint or it looks like some sort of piece of paper or fabric that's on almost like a piece of white white painted canvas because it's got this almost like a canvas kind of look to it but uh i mean imagine just this took a lot of time just to do just this little piece right here so you can imagine that um i mean you know this is no joke to build this out and have each page be so just, just wonderful. These are all really well done. And now we get this scene here where she meets him for the first time. He's protecting her and what is this all about? Okay, um, this is interesting. I love these little things here. Aha, so. That's interesting. So we've got this here, and then you put this level, this layer of tone on there. That is just so cool looking. Yeah, that's neat. Same thing on this side. These like stats that he puts on there. And it's only for the demon, it looks like. And now the Ronan and Casey kind of have a moment after after the uh, the action. Now they have this kind of moment of intimacy. These are great little. I mean, he's. I can't say for sure, but I mean, this is kind of like Monera type stuff that reminds me of just like the the simple panels and the positioning of, of things that's great yep and here we are yeah look at that that's great yeah i love the big splash pages at the end you gotta love it book five let's keep going this is the cover of the book and uh 
We've got two more. We're going to bang these out. Yeah, this is Ronin number five. A little white out here. It looks like he switched up how he was going to do it. He was going to put some, some lines of a uh, fold, fabric fold, but then he said, forget it, and didn't. And now Casey and the Ronin are trying to figure out what the heck is going on. What are we going to do together? He's talking about snowing. It has never snowed. It hasn't snowed in five years. And now she realizes he's speaking English now. It's like, what's going on here? definitely a connection she has this connection with him you know that she definitely doesn't have with her her lover the scientist learn it this reminds me to these bricks and everything for some reason of that Sin City story with Marv and now again, I don't know why this is upside down. I guess he just used it different ways. Okay. And so Casey's husband, McKenna, is, um, he's been kind of tied up, literally. And Virgo's not helping him. He is upset, of course, because they're now um, going to use his technology for weaponry, which he's against. And Taggart was against, too, before he became possessed by the demon, who is all about destruction, as you would imagine. Speaking of which, here is Taggart right here. A la Agot the demon. And uh, that's great. That's a great pose. Oh, look how different this is, yeah. And then we go, boom, look at that. Yeah, look at that, that's Sin City right there, dude. That is Sin City right there. Totally, love it. That's good too. It does a great job of almost every page, there's there's at least one like, boom, I got you panel. You know, it's it's usually a bigger one or some kind of profile or a cool pose or something, Each pa each page, He's got something that's that's pretty fun to look at. That's that's innovative or just graphically looks neat. You know, uh, each page there's at least one. So boom, look at this beautiful horse. He's into horses, and look, I like that one. I like that one actually a lot, with the uh, the lines going through showing this action and these cool trees. So it's like each page he's got something. What do you know? What did I say? Yeah, here's that lone wolf and cub, again, kind of look. And these are these, uh, like, assassins that have came. These, like, robotic assassins that Virgo's created. Uh, that's, you know, in his mind or somehow, you know, we don't really understand it, what's going on with, with this Ronan and how he's in this world or, or what. But it's Billy in some way. Yeah, check that out. This is so much... We've got it. It's over there. We're going to get into Lone Wolf and Cub, but this is just like Lone Wolf and Cub, this stuff here. I mean, where is it? Hang on. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Oh, hang on real quick. Just grab it. Oh, mama. I mean, let me just grab this. I'm literally just grabbing it. Uh, let me see here. I mean, some of the stuff, you know, some of these lines, some of this line work and stuff, it just reminds me a lot of it, you know? And I'm just, no, I'm probably not picking the right ones necessarily, but um, some of this line work just reminds me a lot of it. I can't wait to go through this. We're going to do this one. I'm excited about that. That's going to be fun. Uh, great shadows too, right there. 
Yeah, this is the stuff that we love to see Muller do. These big, long, wide kind of um, paneling. Yeah, th and this paneling is very interesting. Oh, it's not scanned by the original art. Okay, that makes sense. I felt like it's a little different. That's because it's not the original pages. Here's some more. Yeah, this action stuff is great. Uh oh, it's gonna get shot. It's a great shot. And robotic arm number one goes, oh my God. And then it's like, oh, we're not in a fantasy world. This is our reality. And this is just, you know, those were kind of like hologram or, or mental imagery of, of what was there. And now we see, you know, the, the um, Saul Corporation executives are watching this and they're like, uh, what about that guy there that you just like ripped his arm off? Oh, that's okay. He's part of the program. He's an android. Don't worry about him. They don't know that those are real people. They think this is some sort of a stunt or practice drill that they're doing a demonstration. Uh, what do we got here? This is a uh, 612. 16. This, this is white out. Yeah. Well, not all the way. Actually, no, it's not white. A little bit of white out there. It's smoke. Not all of it. Now she picks up the sword. Now that he's, uh, now that the Ronin's been wounded, incapacitated, she's now going to Take it up. It's great positioning, by the way, of that sword, the foreshortening of it. That's hard to do. It's really hard to do. He's laid out. He's just like Billy now. He's back to that state. We've got this biotechnic robot, which she's never seen because she only knows, you know, the robots that, that would not be these things. Uh, but she notices they're green plastic robots. So what's going on, Virgo? So, you know, that's where the coloring would help. You would see that everything here is a green, these little green robots. Then we're kind of getting these flashbacks with Billy and Virgo is really taunting Billy with these flashbacks of when he was a child, how he was taunted by this mean bully character and that's what spurred on his first kind of psychic outbreak which killed the boy. And that kind of started down his descent into madness or whatever. And that is, that is beautiful. This reminds me of Akira. Oh, the cool glasses. And so he does it again to the robot. And flashing back, we see mom's response to the dead child that he, that his tormentor, the little kid that tormented him. You monster, you monster. I'm sorry, mama. And that was, uh, and now we see Ronan saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't yell at me, Mama. You know, so it's Billy. And he's uh, reliving those, the torments. That's some Joker-esque little laughs. This is nice too. I always like these little lines. Kind of like a vertical blinds, shadowing. Some more Lone Wolf and Cub battling. Oh, this is great. And now we see these, his version, you know, in, in the and the reality are there are these robots, but he sees these demons, you know? It's like, are they demons? Well, they're just these robots, they're not demons. But that's one version of it. These are all neat, these little like smokes. Water drip, something fell down there. Change our hand, hand. 
Interesting. He was gonna put it right there, which would would be fine. But then he moves it down right there. I guess that's better. I don't know. I suppose it is. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess it's better that way. <laughs> What's going on here? Big old smuts of something. Big old chunk of chocolate or something on it. Big chunk of eating a Mars bar while he's making his book. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay. There we go. And that is that. Now she's coming. She's got the sword. Okay. Last book. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Seppuku? Yeah. Seppuku? Is that called Seppuku? What is that called? Comment below. I can't remember. Some, uh, I want to say Seppuku. But I could be wrong. Something, something similar to that. Um, that's really cool. I really like that a lot. Man, I like that a lot. Just like her, I like her framing and stuff. It's great. Yeah. It's really cool. Okay. And there's Billy. The Ronin. The last book. Now she's now going into Virgo. So she, I mean, into the Aquarius. So she's like, okay, I got a sword. I'm going in there. I'm going to go take out Virgo because clearly all hell's gone gone bad. Taggart's gone rogue and gone military. There's all these robots going around. Killed this paraplegic dude or at least chopped off his arms. So now he's para paraplegic again. And so I'm going to go kick some butt. So she's going to go in here and try to figure out how to, how to get rid of Virgo. That's what she's up to. And there are these, uh, these couple of... Um, tech workers that are going to help her out here and get her past a few things. Some of the security measures. Here's some of those guys are chatting it up. Little Superman symbol there. See that? It's kind of fun. This is the Josie bar of it. It's interesting. All these smoke. It's got everyone smoking. All these little Smoke trails going up. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I like all these blacks. I like all this black. This really high contrast stuff. And now the laughing demon. Agat's here. And he's tormenting. But Casey's got her armor on. She's got the sword. She's coming to kick some butt. But it's still kind of in this, there's still this imagery of the feudal Japan stuff. And I'm assuming that's just in their mind. Right? Now oh, that's really cool. Some of the great panel. He does just has great positioning and, and dynamic. And, but it doesn't look too like posed, you know? This is really cool too. Got the close up. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is interesting because we're gonna see this image go, go, go farther, farther down. And this is basically the ship is being kind of, um, or the system, I'm, I'm calling it a ship, but like Aquarius is, we have like a blackout, the power was out. And so it's slowly being turned back on. And so as we go through this, we're gonna see it slowly, more parts of the ship are being illuminated, the lights are coming on, the power's being restored. And so we're just getting this more and more, right? We're seeing more and more of this. It's actually kind of a cool idea. And boom, now we start to see the whole thing. It's coming back online. So Casey's, Casey's plan is not necessarily working out. That's great. And we have this, you know, Billy versus 
the robot and Virgo are kind of going at it, and, you know. Because he's trapped. And Virgo's been this mother figure, this parental figure. And he's been always acquiescing and always being obedient to Virgo. But uh, that might not continue to happen here because she's, she, he's getting pushed too much. Oh, that's great. There's her husband, Peter. But Peter's been kind of transformed, right? Peter uh, McKenna, her husband, he's now been kind of mutated with that bio. You know, she's a control, Casey, not me, for a computer. She's got a sick sense of humor. I wondered why she wanted all this to happen. So she told me and showed me biocircuitry is alive in a way. It's not alive enough for her. Not enough like plants, they can't move, they can't think. And so it's, it's something in Billy's mind. So Billy's teaching uh, Virgo. That's what it's been happening this whole time. And so he's kind of wackadoodle right now. <clears throat> and yeah, that's what I thought. I'm like, something's gonna happen here. Yeah, he, sh he shoots himself, kills himself. That's great effect, by the way. That's really cool effect, I like that a lot. Yeah. And she blows his brains out, literally. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore. <laughs> We're getting towards the end of our story though, so we gotta wrap things up. This is a really great book. Um, even if you don't get this one, which is, uh, you can get this around 150 or so, I would say, go get the trade. It's so good, it's a great story, and the art's amazing as you can see here, and the colors are really good too. So uh, while I, I, I firmly believe this could be a black and white, as we've seen, colors, uh, colors ain't bad. And now he's like, free me, my love. I'm going to take you out of God. Here we are, the, the, the end here. Rise your own, your battle has ended. There's only one act worthy of a samurai. This is interesting. And a woman killed him for you. And then she, he's like, my love. <laughs> just slaps him. No sound effect, though. Just, we know what happened, though. Whack out. How dare you? There's only one act left to you worthy of a samurai. Samurai. Boom. There's a sword, dude. I'll be your second. That much you've earned. Take it. If you have the courage. And so he's like, okay. I know what I gotta do. There you go, you have courage. Goes across the gut. Man, it's pretty sad. It's actually kinda of messed up. Billy. She goes in. If Billy stays alive, I think Virgo would learn more and become more dangerous. So I think Billy has to go, basically, is the gist of that. But by Billy dying, it's also Casey losing someone that she cared for, too. Check this out. Check this out. Wah, wah, wee, wah. That's really cool. Yeah. Look at that. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, there's more. Okay, this is kind of massive. That's really neat. Okay, that's really cool. There's more to this. There's more to this, Mama. Um, oh, and now we're gonna go, okay. Boom, this is the end, right? Yeah. That's it. But then, yeah, it's weird because then at the end it's like, then there's a samurai. He's like, I am, best good. 
a great, isn't that a great picture? Isn't that a great image? Man, goodness. Wow. And then here's some, it says, uh, unfinished early versions of different pages. Cover art from Anything Goes number two. I don't know what that is. I'll have to look what that book is, Anything Goes. But this is kind of neat, I like it. I like that a lot. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, how do you like them apples? This is the book, this is part three the third and final part of this massive book. Thank you guys so much for for being here with me. Thanks a lot. Um, great book. Um, go ahead and subscribe to these to these uh, channel. I think there's gonna be a lot more stuff you're gonna enjoy. Uh, feel free to go ahead and hit that bell icon to be notified of them. Comment, let me know what you guys think of this or other things you want me to cover. And uh, if you got a minute, check out the Patreon. I've got my own comics there you might enjoy. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye.